there's seven events in the NFR. Barrel racing. Go! Saddle bronc. Go! Go, Layton! Yes, sir, Layton. Yes, sir! Folks, that Canadian just made a real nice bronc ride. Bareback riding. Trying to get even. This horse is bucked off. Caleb Bennett, too. Clayton Bigelow picking him up, setting his feet. Oh, yes, sir. Calf roping. He goes from the belt, like we said, a block. He's out. Okay, big, turn him around. Ryan Jarrett's got a chance for a read a record right here. From the belt, that moves 6'3. Whoa, 6'7. Team roping. It's a piece. They've got to win more money. A slower handle and steer, but they're able to stretch it all out. 4.3, and Jake and Billy Jack now go to the top spot. Steer wrestling. Cadillac yeah, horse of the year. Clayton got to start long reach, catches him, does a good job staying on his feet. How about that? 3.8. Oh, there's a man. Hey, don't count him out for the all-around championship. <laughs> and bull riding. And Mitra Steitman is a Jackie Robinson of bull riding. Have you heard of Mitra Steitman? Not many people have, despite the legacy he holds in the rodeo world. He is the Jackie Robinson of rodeo, and opened many doors for African Americans to earn their way into such a dangerous competition. Steitman was born May 7th in 1935 on a ranch with his brother, mother, and father in Crockett, Texas. His mother, Ada Lee, worked hard for her children since her husband, O.D. Deitman, died when Beatrice was only 15 years old. After that, he left school to work on the ranch, which many cowboys at the time would do. He and his brother worked hard to support his mother just like she would do for them. Fast forward to 1957. He and James Francis Jr. founded the Prairie View Trail Ride Association, which is still around today. It was a rodeo and a trail ride. It was created to promote black western heritage and are often shown in the infamous Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. He was there from 1957 to 1960. Not long before that, at 19 years old, James Francis Jr. convinced him to go on the rodeo road. He started as a bull fighter, a job involving subduing bulls in front of a huge crowd. He also was a rodeo clown, which is where you catch the bull's attention when a bull rider falls off to prevent the bull trampling them. It taught him how to read bulls and learn their movements. Not long after, he entered bronc riding, a similar sport where you ride a bucking horse for 8 seconds, and steer wrestling, a event where you jump off your running horse and have to flip the steer onto his side. He had a few victories within this, but kept his eyes on those bulls, and that's just what he did. He took a leap of faith and began riding bulls. During the uh, early 60s, when you watch TV, yeah. you never see no black folks riding bulls in the night in the final. So I was shocked. I said, there's got to be something wrong with that. His talent wasn't unknown, and it didn't take long before he entered the pro ranks. He says this was easy for him thanks to his fellow black bull riding friends. Freddie Gordon, Willie Thomas, and James Thomas helped him a lot when he was just starting out. Oh yeah, I faced a lot of challenges, you know. Um, I had a lot of guys that really helped me, and then I had a lot of guys that didn't help me, but everything worked out. His competitors quickly took a liking to him. They saw him as an excellent performer and enjoyed hanging out with him. They were helpful and didn't care about his skin, just his talent. Though, he didn't care about the competition. He just cared about the ball. Christian Rim, a reporter, asked Deckman, You were 11 years old when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. What did seeing a black man play in Major League mean to you? It meant a whole lot, he had told her. A lot of time, you know, they say, the blacks can't do that, like me riding bulls. Back in the day, there was no blacks riding bulls. They thought all you could do was pick cotton and stuff like that. But I didn't want to be no cotton picker. I wanted to prove to the world that blacks could ride bulls. And that's what I did. 
Despite the racism he endured from the audience and judges. The town, you go to it, they like black. So they just hold you to last. And back in them days, the judge like, uh, they might have a judge that didn't like black people. So they, they made mark you down. Well, they didn't let me win it. Well, yeah, I went to a lot of rooms, you know, the, like I said, the rodeo never was prejudiced. But the town and thing out again was prejudiced. The rodeo you know? people themselves. Yeah, they just like, they just like a big family. They would even help you meet them. You know, they'd pull your rope <laughs> or whatever, to beat, whatever they could loan you, they would loan it, you know. But a lot of towns, I went in, they'd, uh, they, they'd make you right after the rodeo and playing like that. But I didn't care because I went anywhere. And uh, it, it was a good sport. I tell you what, that's, I like to do it all over again. He never lost that drive. They often told him the only way he could keep up with the pros was to turn white. And he had to sleep in his car as hotels would turn him away due to the color of his skin. Judges often docked points due to this fact as well. But he refused to give up. His first year bull riding, he ranked 17th. Two placings out of the national final rodeo, NFR. But Carl Nasker had an injury, and Deitman was his replacement in his first NFR. In 1966, he became the first black cowboy to qualify for the NFR. He then qualified six more times from 1966 to 1972, only missing it once in those seven years. He finished eighth at his first NFR in the PRCA, Pro Rodeo Cowboy Association, standings. In 1967, he came in third. 68, he came in fourth. 69, he was 15th and 13th and 1970. He did make a second place at one of his years, but he never did get that first place. He did, however, win the Calgary Stampede in 1971. And in 1972, he won Cheyenne Frontier Day Rodeo. His last NFR, also in 1972, he placed seventh in the standings. Well, well, the message, I guess, that the, you want to pass along is you just kept going. You stayed focused on what you were doing, despite what other people were doing. Yeah, I asked a lot of more guys, you know, was, was like Willie Jones and Freddie Gordon, they rode them with a lot of black guys. And they the one kind of uh, kind of showed me how to go by it. And uh, so I was looking at TV one time, and I seen all these white guys on TV. So I said, uh, man, I wonder why I don't see no black guys uh -huh. in the final. So I got told, I said, man, I just want to go. I said, what you mean, I want to go? And I said, bull is the bull. Yeah. You know, I said, hey, ride them, I can ride <laughs> and so they said, well, I don't know about that. So I got out there and tried. And I wound up in, in 64, I wound up in 15th place. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. And now you're going to the Hall of Fame. Going out for animated. Uh, Murtis at times felt like he was being maybe discriminated against, but I never heard him once uh, complain about it. Uh, but if he'd have ridden probably 20 years later, he probably would have won a world title because he, he, he rode that good. In 1970, Charles Sampson seeked his advice, and Deitman advised him to stay in school. He listened, and when he graduated, became a protege. Last year, uh, I started a guy named Charlie Sampson in riding bulls, and uh, last year he called me and said, Mr. Murphy, I said, yeah, he said, man, come to, come to uh, I went to Colorado Springs, uh -huh. and they'll keep in the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Colorado Springs. He was the first black champion cowboy. And I started him, he's the first black, and went in Colorado Springs. And he called me, I want to put him out there. <laughs> he worked hard with Dykeman as they traveled the rodeo road together. Samson, with the help of Dykeman, worked hard and became the first African American to win a world title at the NFR. I, I think Murder is probably one of the guys that most inspired me as a kid coming up. Next to me, right there, cheering me on. You know, that's, a, that's a special feeling that I have for Murder. And he came back and said, you know, you can ride them, them bulls later or you can ride them steers later, but you better stay in school. I stayed in school and got a rodeo scholarship and went to two years of college. He is number one in the world standings of the PRCA. Dutton was there for this, and he opened the gate during his bull ride. We'll get hung up or actually can't get his hand out, and that's when the clowns come in. Oh, there's Style, a good tough bull. Now he's turned back, and Charlie's got him. Charlie. Hey, we got a bull ride going on, a tough bull to draw, a tough bull to ride. Good hustle by Charles Sampson, and listen to him. They love this cowboy. I'll tell you, they do. Pride. That's the most important thing, just be, be proud to be one. When Dykeman heard the results, he was just as happy as Samson was. 
it had felt like they shared a victory as this opened many doors for African Americans dreaming of the NFR. He stated, Samson's victory proved that the title once denied me could no longer be denied to other black cowboys. He may have retired from competitive rodeo, but he played himself in 1971 in the movie J.W. Coop and in 1987's Junior Bonner. He also partnered with the American Hat Company to make the Mirtris Deitman Signature Hats, which is still around today. He was inducted into many Hall of Fames. This includes Texas Rodeo Hall of Fame, National Cowboy Hall of Fame, both in 1997, the Texas Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame in 2001, as well as the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 2016. In 2003, he got into the National Cowboys of Color Museum and Hall of Fame, and that same year he entered the Pro Bowl Riders Ring of Honor. There is a bronze statue of him in Porth Agricultural Indoor Arena in Crockett, Texas. They hold a pro rodeo in his name every year. In the early 90s, he left retirement and entered the Old Timers Championship, and he won four years in a row. He currently works with youth groups and mentors black rodeo performers in Houston and Crockett, Texas. He has many kids and grandkids, but his son, Mitras Deitman Jr., followed in his father's footsteps to compete in pro rodeo. We used to go to rodeos, and we never looked at, at we just thought of it as a rodeo. And he taught us the same way, that everybody's the same, no matter what, I mean, you just competing. He visits many schools along Texas to promote staying in school, as well as to try and get rid of drugs and alcohol in the schools. Success is not given out on the corner. It is earned by hard work and self-determination. Mitra Steitman. Well, now I just come to like rodeo, on. and then I and then I won. Then be the best. It got be the best bull ride in the world. That was my. That was my. That was, my, that was what I wanted to come with, being the best bull ride in the world. <laughs> 